onto the presentation of the survey findings by research associate Judy Shrusta. Um, today, I would like to wish a special thank you to Judy. Uh, this will be her last briefing here at PPIC, and tomorrow will be her last day at PPIC as she heads back uh, to Kathmandu, Nepal, to do some important research there and to be closer to her family. She spent the last four years with us here, and we are uh, really uh, happy to have had her and really appreciate the work that she's done, um, but understand the meaning uh, of how important family is. Uh, and so with that, um, I'll be back up after to have a Q&A with the other co project manager, but at this time I'd like to invite Julia. Thank you, Dean, and thank you all for joining us today. Um, we also have research associate Luna Lopez with us, who was the other co-manager in this survey, and both Dean and Luna will join us at the end for any questions that you have regarding the findings for this survey. Um, so to those not familiar with the statewide surveys, I would like to begin with a brief background about our work. Our mission is to provide timely, relevant, nonpartisan data on social, political, and economic opinions of Californians. And by doing so, we seek to inform and improve the state policy making process, raise awareness, and encourage discussion about important issues. Since starting our first survey in 1998, more than 310,000 Californians have spoken to us about important state and federal issues in over 140 general issue-specific and regional surveys. The Californians and their government is our general survey series funded by the James Irvine Foundation. And this particular survey in the series looks at a wide range of state and federal issues from water policy to transportation and higher education funding at the state level and income inequality, immigration, healthcare reform, and marijuana legalization at the federal level. Interviews for this survey was conducted by phone, both on landline and cell phones, between March 8 and March 17. Interviews were conducted in the language of preference of the respondent between English and Spanish. Um, we were able to reach 1,706 California adults, and the margin of error for this sample is 3.7%. Among them, we consider 1,064 to be likely voters, and the margin of error for the likely voter sample is 4.7%. So to begin with findings on questions asked about state government, we looked at the overall mood in the state, approval ratings of elected officials, views on taxes, water policy, transportation, higher education, and civic engagement. So uh, looking at the approval ratings of state officials, Governor, Governor Brown's approval is now at 55%, a drop from the highest level his approval ever reached in January, which was at 61%. Um, for the past few years, we've noticed that there's an uptick in approval in January and a slight uh, decline between January to March. However, um, approval of Governor Brown today is higher than where it was last March. The state legislature's approval is at 45%, which is also a slight drop from where it was in January. And as with the governor's ratings, the state legislature's ratings are also higher today than where it was in last March. We asked Californians to name the most important issue in the state at the moment, and the top two issues mentioned were jobs in the economy and the water and the drought. Uh, some of the other issues mentioned, but less often, were education, schools and teachers, immigration, illegal immigration, and crime. So the jobs and the economy and water and the drought have been the top two most mentioned issues in all of our surveys starting from last March. Turning to the outlook for the state, half of Californians say that things in the state are going in the right direction. Um, the share saying that things are going in the right direction is slightly higher than where it was last March. Uh, 
looking at the economic outlook for the state, just over half say that uh, the state will have good times financially in the next 12 months. Those living in the San Francisco Bay Area are more likely than Californians in other regions to expect good times financially. So April brings us to the deadline to file income taxes, which may be slightly um, stressful for some of us who haven't done it yet and not so stressful for people who did it really early. So we decided it was a good time to ask about some general perceptions about the state and local tax system. Um, half of Californians think that the current state and local tax system is either very or moderately fair, and the other half think that it is not too fair or not at all fair. Although Californians consider the tax system to be fair, six in 10 adults also say that they are paying either much more or somewhat more than they should in taxes. Those with higher incomes are the most likely to say that they pay much more than they should in taxes. Across parties, Republicans are more likely than independents and Democrats to say that they pay much more in taxes than they should. Uh, in another question, we also asked Californians to rate the state's per capita taxes compared to other states, and six in 10 adults said that California ranks either near the top or above average in terms of per capita taxes paid. With the improvements in the economy, there have also been improvements in the state budget situation in California, and we see this in the in how Californians view the current state budget situation. Only 45% consider it to be a big problem, 36% say that it is somewhat of a problem, and 11% say that it is not a problem. The share of Californians calling the state budget situation a big problem is at its lowest point since May 2007, when 44% called it a big problem. We found that between January 2008 and July 2013, more than six in 10 adults considered the state budget situation to be a big problem. So the state budget situation has improved partly because of revenues through the Proposition 30 taxes that voters approved in 2012. Um, with the taxes set to expire in 2018, there is some talk of extending it beyond the state. When we asked about support for extending the taxes beyond 2018, uh, we found that half of Californians are in favor and likely voters are divided on extending it past 2000. Um, across parties, Democrats and independents are in favor, while most Republicans are opposed to extending these taxes. We also asked a follow-up questions to those who said that they would favor extending the Prop 30 taxes, whether they would still favor it if the taxes, tax increases were made permanent, and find that in that case, support drops to 35% among Californians overall and 32% among likely voters. Um, but we also asked whether California voters should have a say on the extension of Proposition 30 taxes, just as they did in 2012, and solid majorities across parties and two and third adults and likely voters say that voters should have a say in this issue. As we continue to be in a very severe drought, we have been tracking perceptions of area water supply. Um, our surveys were conducted as state government considered expanding uh, upon restrictions placed on water use last year. And just as our interviewing period ended, Governor Brown announced one $1 billion in drought relief. Um, when asked about the seriousness of water supply in their area, 66% say that the water supply in their area is a big problem, which is close to the highest um, that people have said, uh, which was in October 2014. Majorities across regions view their area water supply as a big problem, with Central Valley residents being <coughs> the most likely to say so, followed by residents in Orange San Diego, the San Francisco Bay Area, Los Angeles, and then the Inland Empire. 
In, adi in addition to assessing current water supply, we also asked Californians whether they thought that water supply in the future would be adequate. And about seven in 10 adults say that in 10 years, the water supply in their area will either be very or somewhat inadequate for what is needed. Um, we've seen a change in the share of Californians saying that future water supply will be very inadequate. It has grown 12 points since last March and 17 points since September 2013. Even though Californians consider the water supply both present and in the future to be an issue, they think that people in their area are not doing enough to respond to the drought, with two in three Californians saying that people in their area are not doing enough. Uh, more than six in 10 Californians across regions, parties, racial and ethnic groups, as well as different education and income levels say that the people in their area are not doing enough to respond to the drought. Moving on to another topic, uh, we also asked attitudes towards some transportation projects in this survey. Governor Brown in his inaugural address stressed the importance of maintaining the roads, highways, and bridges in California. We asked um, Californians to rate the condition of these infrastructure in their area and got some mixed reviews. A third consider the condition of this type of infrastructure to be a big problem. Another third think that it is somewhat of a problem and a third think that it is not a problem in their area. But regardless of how they feel the condition of their roads are, a majority of Californians say that it is very important to spend more money to maintain California's roads, highways, and bridges for future quality of life in the state. Um, And then we also looked at some specific ways that could be used to raise money for maintaining <coughs> or providing more funding for California's roads, highways, and bridges, and find that support falls far short of a majority for all three. Um, less than one in four Californians favor increasing the state gasoline tax or increasing the vehicle registration fees, and only 47% say that um, they would favor issuing bonds to the state's general fund for this purpose. The other transportation area that we asked about in the survey is the high-speed rail system, and we've tracked opinions on the high-speed rail in several of our past surveys. Today we find that about three in 10 adults think that the high-speed rail system is very important for California's future. The share saying that it is very important for the state's future has declined compared to past surveys. When read a brief description of the high-speed rail project and the costs associated with it, we find that Californians are divided on building the high-speed rail system in California. Support has been always about 50% in past polls. Those living in the San Francisco Bay Area favor building it. Um, those in Los Angeles are divided, whereas residents in the Central Valley or in San Diego and the Inland Empire are opposed to this project. Another area of funding that we asked about is higher education. Governor Brown and the UC president has very different views regarding state funding for California's public universities. Um, Governor Brown has said that the state funding for public universities should be increase only if the universities freeze tuition and fees for the next four years. So we asked Californians what their views were on this issue and found that 48% think that state funding for the universities should be increased only if there is a freeze in tuition and fees. 28% say that the level of funding should not be increased at all. And 19% say that funding should be increased regardless of uh, tuition and fee hike. So last two elections had record low 
turnout and sparked discussions on ways to increase both voter registration as well as voter turnout. And we thought that it would be good to understand some of the underlying reasons as to why people do not register and when they do, do not uh, go out to vote in order to look at possible solutions to remedy low turnout. When, um, uh, when we asked unregistered Californians their main reason for not voting, the most often reason cited was that they were not a US, US citizen. Some of the other top reasons include the sense that voting does not change things, there being some time constraints, uh, a lack of confidence in government, politics, as well as politicians, and a general lack, in lack of interest in politics. Californians between ages 18 to 44 are more likely than older ones to say that voting does not change anything. Men are more likely than women to say that they do not have confidence in government. Um, Latinos are more likely than unregistered Californians overall to say that they're not registered because they're not a US citizen. And among registered adults who report that they have not vote, uh, voted in all elections, the top reason given for not voting is time constraints. Some of the other reasons given were a lack of interest in the particular issues, not knowing enough about the issues, a lack of interest in politics, and the sense that voting does not really change anything. Republicans are more likely than others to mention a lack of interest or not knowing enough about the issues. Democrats are more likely to state a lack of interest in politics as the main reason why they do not always vote. Californians between the ages of 18 to 34, an age group that is uh, talked about a lot when it comes to discussions about voting, uh, say that the main reason they do not vote is time constraints. Uh, Latinos are also more likely than whites to say that they do not always vote because of time constraints. Men are also more likely than women to give this as a reason for not always voting. And men also say, compared to women, that uh, lack of interest in the issues is the reason that they do not always vote. Now I will present findings on questions that we asked at the federal, re federal, re federal level and also uh, see how Californians differ in their attitudes towards these issues compared to adults nationwide. Some of the issues that we covered were approval ratings officials, um, immigration reform, global war warming, and marijuana legalization. Starting with the president's approval, 55% uh, of Californians approve of the job pro performance of President Obama. Approval was again slightly higher in January, uh, but it's higher today than where it was last March. In a recent CNN ORC poll among adults nationwide, uh, the approval rating of the president was 46%, so adults in California are slightly more approving of the president than adults nationwide. We also find that today, both Governor Brown and President Obama have the same approval rating at 55%. Um, Californians continue to have very low approval ratings for the US Congress. Um, it has dropped 14 points since January and is currently at 24%. Um, adults nationwide in a Gallup poll gave a job performance rating of 18% to the US Congress. Turning to the outlook for the nation, Californians say, half of Californians say that things in the nation are generally going in the wrong direction. But when it comes to the economic outlook for the country, just over half expect good times financially. When comparing Californians' outlook towards the state versus that of the nation, we found that for the economic outlook, the views are very similar. However, Californians are more negative about the direction of the nation than they are about the direction of the state. We have been tracking general views towards the health reform law that passed in 2010, and today 52% say that they have generally favorable opinions of the health reform law, whereas 42% say that they have generally unfavorable 
views and results were very similar earlier in the year when we asked the question in January. But before that, res Californians were very closely divided on their opinions of the health reform law. Uh, compared to adults nationwide, according to a Kaiser Family Foundation poll, Californians again have a more favorable rating of the law. In the Kaiser poll, 41% of adults nationwide said that they have a generally favorable view of the health reform law. We found that half of Californians are very concerned and um, mm -hmm. one in four are at least somewhat concerned about not being able to afford health care when a family member gets sick. Concern about this issue is much higher among those earning less than 40,000 compared to higher income groups. Um, concern is also higher among those with a high school education or less. Latinos are more likely than blacks and far more likely than Asians and whites to be very concerned um, about not being able to afford health care. Um, among those who are very concerned about not being able to afford health care when a family member gets sick, we find that opinions of the health care law is divided. Um, talking about immigration, there is still high level of support for President Obama's executive action on immigration, even though it has been challenged in the courts in several states. Um, seven in 10 adults support it, and there's majority support among likely voters as well. But this is a very partisan issue with eight in 10 Democrats in favor, and nearly two in three Republicans being opposed. We also asked a overall question about providing a path to citizenship to some illegal immigrants in the US, provided that some conditions are met. And unlike the executive action on immigration, there is a strong agreement across parties for providing a path to citizenship with, three in with more than two in three Republicans, Democrats, and independents saying that they would favor it. Uh, next, we asked about some general views about income inequality in the country. Seven in 10 Californians say that the gap between the rich and the poor in the nation is growing. Results were very similar among adults nationwide in a January poll conducted by CBS News. But we found that Californians are more likely than adults nationwide in the same poll to say that the government should do more to reduce the gap between the rich and the poor. Um, we find that majorities of Democrats and independents think that the government should be doing more, whereas most Republicans think that this is not a role for a government. We found that likely voters are more likely than Californians overall to say that the income gap is growing, but they are less likely than adults overall to say that the government should do more to reduce the gap. Whites are the most likely racial and ethnic group to say that the income gap is widening, and they are the least likely to say that the government should do more about it. Um, those earning less than 40,000 annually are less likely than high income earners to say that the income gap is widening, but they are the most likely group to say that the government should do more to reduce the gap. Both Governor Brown and President Obama have spoken about taking steps to reduce global warming. And uh, we asked Californians in our survey whether they thought that global warming would be posing a serious problem to the country if nothing was done about it. And we found that six in 10 Californians think that it will be a very serious problem if nothing is done to address it. Um, so the share of Californians saying that it will become a very serious problem is higher than the share of adults nationwide. In a Stanford, New York Times, and Resources for the Future poll conducted in January, but even the adults nationwide, uh, a majority think that it, it will be at least somewhat of a problem for the nation if nothing is done to address it. The last topic that I will be talking about is marijuana legalization, and we find that a slim majority of adults today favor it. At 53%, this is the highest level of support for legalizing marijuana that we have found. Um, it will be interesting to watch views on marijuana as ballot measures 
are being considered once again. Um, we found majority support in October 2014 and September 2013 as well. Uh, Democrats and independents say that marijuana use should be made legal, and Republican thinks it should be illegal. Those between the ages of 18 to 34 are more likely than older Californians to say that marijuana use should be legal. Over half of Californians who have children under the age of 18 in their household say that marijuana use should be illegal. Those without children that age in their household say that it should be made legal. Among racial and ethnic groups, blacks and whites say that, majority of blacks and whites say that marijuana use should be made legal, whereas the majority of Asians and Latinos say that it should be illegal. Uh, three in four Californians who report having tried marijuana say that it should be made legal, compared to 35% who of those who said that they have never tried it. We also asked a second question about whether uh, residents would be bothered in the case that marijuana becomes legal and there is a store in their neighborhood and find that uh, just over half say that it, they would not be bothered by a marijuana shop opening up in their neighborhood. 44% say that they would be bothered. There is a huge age gap in um, this regard with 66% of Californians between the ages of 18 to 34 saying that they would not be bothered compared to older Californians. Um, nearly three in four uh, Californians who have tried marijuana say that a store opening up in their neighborhood would not bother them, whereas six in 10 among those who report not never having tried marijuana saying that, that it would bother them if a store opened. Um, of note is that a majority of parents with children 18 and under say that it would bother them if a marijuana store opened up in the neighborhood. So just to recap some of the key findings of the survey, we found that approval ratings for both the state and federal elected officials is higher than last March. Uh, the drought is a top concern for all Californians, and most say that residents are not doing enough. There is support for extending the Proposition 30 taxes, but only if it's not permanent, and there's majority support for having voters decide on it. Most view spending on infrastructure as very important, and Californians also consider global warming to be a very serious problem, and support for legalizing marijuana is at its highest level. So now I would like to invite Dean and Luna to answer any questions that you have about the survey. And as Dean mentioned, this will be my last briefing here in Sacramento. And um, I've always really enjoyed giving these briefings here. And I see some familiar faces. So I would like to thank everyone who's here today and who have um, come to our briefings in the past. Um, I will miss coming to Sacramento and seeing you all. But for now, we will take any questions you have about the survey. If you have any questions, just make sure that Kelly can get the mic to you so we can capture it on, on sound. Did you, uh, with the marijuana legalization issue, did you mention uh, what likely voters, the support is for likely voters versus non? Um. That number is at 55% today. So 55% of likely voters think that it should be legal. Yeah, just one second. I had uh, two follow-ups on the marijuana question. One is, uh, do you have any idea on, are there any polls that suggest how this tracks with prohibition of drugs in general? I mean, are people possibly opening up to that, uh, you know, legalizing other drugs? And if so, uh, are you guys likely to ever include a question like that, too, to compare? So. Uh, well, first, we've never asked a question specifically about other drugs. Um, um, but that is an interesting concept because it is talked about. But uh, yeah, in regards to future polls, we're always looking at what's coming across the plate in Sacramento and, and what's kind of policy relevant. And so I think as we move forward, we'll make sure to to monitor it. We do know that you know there are other countries that have kind of had a uh, a legalization of pretty much all drugs. So um, who who knows? This is California, I guess. So. 
We have seen surveys by the Pew Research Center looking at alcohol and marijuana together, but this is for adults nationwide. So you could look at findings from that survey conducted last year. Yes, my question is about the funding of public higher education universities. And uh, it says that 48% are in favor of additional funding only if the, uh, the universities don't raise fees and tuition. What does the other percentage say? Um, so. so that was 28%, uh, I believe, who said that it shouldn't be raised at all. And then 19% who said they would favor increasing it even if tuition and fees increased. And so, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Well, with that, I'd like, yes, one more? Oh, sorry. And with that, I would like to thank everyone for coming today. Uh, please don't forget to fill out your evaluation and hand it into the registration desk on the way out. We really appreciate your feedback. And uh, a special thank you today for Jui and uh, her, her work here at PPIC. And thank you all. Thank you, Jean. Thank you.